I want to tell you about my fatal flaw. A flaw that, if allowed to run its own course of bitterness, resentment, and other negativity, that it might end up dooming me. It has certainly doomed me in the past situationally, but it was only recently in studying a bit about classic Greek and Shakespearean tragedies that I realized that I have exactly what some of these heroes and heroines have, a tragic fatal flaw. I came upon the word in my studies of classic Greek and Shakespearean uh, literature plays, hamartia, which is a fatal flaw that leads to the downfall of a hero. Oftentimes it is chock full, right? It's thick with irony. It was in looking at this and realizing I have the fatal flaw of wanting to control other people's emotional connection to myself. I have had a tumultuous time over the past few weeks that has caused me to be rather bitter towards some of the people around me. Some of the people that I in the past have fairly in my in my subjective opinion I've objectively thought that they were rather morally upstanding people. But I have found that recently some things have caused me to want such a an emotional connection, right? An emotional outpouring from them in a way that matches what I expect, what I think people should do, that when I haven't gotten this, because why should I... I do not control other people. But when I didn't get this, I found myself becoming resentful and bitter and angry. The tragic irony here is that as I seek emotional connection from people and I do not get what I demand and oftentimes express in a very abstract or not at all kind of way, I end up becoming bitter and resentful and turn into a veritable porcupine, someone that no one is going to want to have an emotional connection with, but because they can't get past my pokey exterior. This, this is truly tragic. I've done this before. I've done this with places I've worked that I've kind of hit a point where I said, forget it. Uh, the, these people don't, don't love me. They don't respect me. They don't understand me. So I'll show them the monster I can be. Uh, I'm reminded of one of the characters from a excellent book that I love that just came to mind. It's called The Ballad of Black Tom. It's a retelling of an H.P. Lovecraft story, but from the perspective of one of the characters. Uh, in this retelling, it's the titular character, Tom, uh, who becomes this like Lovecraftian monster kind of beast thing. Um, it's very interesting. That's not much of a spoiler. You totally should read it. Very cool. It's a retelling of the H.P. Lovecraft story, The Horror at Red Hook. Um, what I find is so interesting about this character is that he says, if people expected me to be a monster, I, I leaned into it. I wanted to show them just how much of a monster I could be. Isn't it fascinating to see that in my own experience, my hamartia was this exact setup of saying, I value emotional connection. I mean, heck, I recently did a video on emotional connection and how how important it is to give people dignity, to find nuance, to have all this, and ultimately to make human connections with people. But then when that doesn't happen according to my timeline, according to my internal hopes, dreams, my expectations, my demands, I become bitter. I become resentful. 
I become the monster I think they think I am. Huh. Now, in great tragic stories, it is, it is almost a kind of sick teasing of the audience, but it's important, a few different sources told me, to really give the, the hero a chance to redeem himself, to, to be able to choose otherwise, to choose better. But because of this tragic flaw, the hero still ends up ironically causing his own downfall. I guess I just, I find this, I find this incredibly humbling. And yet I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity to recognize that I have messed this up before. I have done it with my spouse, where I desired some sort of connection or wish that she would read my mind. <laughs> Spoiler alert, all relationships go through some sort of mind reading uh, phase. I'm still working to get better. I think we're getting better. It's a long road for me. But because I wanted a connection that I did not get, I ended up, instead of trying to achieve it in a more mature way, I ended up giving her the silent treatment, not, not dealing with things well, becoming resentful, making uh, snide comments and, you know, little gotcha moments of being able to say, well, hmm, that's exactly what you'd expect of me, wouldn't you? The reason why this is such a faithful trope of tragedy is because we feel it intrinsically in our bones that we too can fall victim to our own fatal flaw. Now, the good news here is that we do not have to fall victim to our own fatal flaw. I found the, the escape hatch here is to remember to be present in the moment of frustration and to look at what psychologists call the locus of control. Fancy phrase for what is in your power to change and what is not. I cannot change people's opinion of me. Not in the direct sense. I can provide them different evidence and hope that they would be willing to evaluate new and a wider body of evidence as to my character. I cannot change how people act towards me and around me. I mean, I wouldn't want to live in that world. It would mean that I would either be holding people at some sort of, you know, weapon point, or I would be some sort of omnipotent tyrant. And neither one lines up with my values at all. To recognize what is within my power to change really begins at the center of myself and ends at the very, very end of my fingertip. No one else is within my locus of control, but I can be content with how I've expressed myself. I can really make sure that I have demonstrated what I feel is the right way to act in a situation, and then I can let go. Another interesting thing is to stop trying to control. Well, rather, it's to not give up so soon. There was a there was an excellent video. I will link it uh, somewhere around here uh, from a channel called Healthy Gamer GG, uh, Dr. K. I really enjoy his videos. Uh, I imagine that lots of people feel this way about lots of videos and channels, but I find that when I watch them, I go, holy cow, this feels like this was cosmically lined up, that God made this happen to send it to me. Is a cool video. Either way, enjoy. But he talks about how he worked with a, uh, a pro, I mean, it was an e-gamer uh, group that uh, when they would get to about 20 minutes into a match of whatever game they're playing, 
League of Legends or something, that if they recognized that they were going to lose, they would just give up. And they would say, well, that's it. I, I, I quit, right? And they would just like, just say, whoop, good game, and I'm out of here. And he found that if he could just delay the point of failure, that they started to win more games. They didn't become perfect. They didn't win every game from then on out. But if he could just get them to say, well, okay, fine, we're going to lose, but we're going to make the other team work for every tiny scrap of ground they gain on us. We're going to see if we can make it 25 minutes and then 30 minutes and 30 and 40 minutes, right? They were able to win a quarter of these games that they were sure at the 20 minute mark, they totally had lost. It was by delaying this and what is called in the cognitive behavioral therapy world, catastrophizing. Familiar? Please see previous video. When we think that we are capable of fortune telling and somehow able to, I mean, it's wild that we never seem to fortune tell when things are going well, right? We may dream of the future and dream of what could be. And we think, well, wouldn't that be nice? But when we hit the 20 minute mark of our current battle, our current struggle and frustration, how quick we are to believe ourselves as 100% accurate that we are doomed to failure. And so we might as well just throw in the towel, right? I see this fatal flaw. It is already fatal. There is absolutely no hope. So without irony, I will embrace the irony and become the monster they expect me to. When I lay it out like this, it seems laughable, but this really is a struggle for myself. I'm making this video and I'm sharing this because I want to remind myself and I want to share this perspective with you that you need to explore for your own benefit, your hamartia. You need to look at this and say, well, Hamlet, Hamlet, many have suggested Hamlet's fatal flaw was indecision. If he had just killed his uncle, happy times, he would have been free of all the misery that came afterwards. Obviously a bit of a contrived example because such is literature and such are plays, but it's a good example of a classic hamartia. Is your hamartia indecision? Is your hamartia a a desire to be right so much that you are willing to <laughs> you are willing to go against other principles that you stand for in order to stand on you know the bones of your enemy so to speak in order to be right is it pride is it is it a hedonistic satisfaction that you are willing to, as uh, some have suggested, that you are willing to chase down material goods. And yet in the end, the irony is that we are really good at getting used to whatever we have. And if we have tons of goods, we end up getting used to it. And it still doesn't bring our satisfaction. Not like other things will. What is your fatal flaw? Take a moment. Take a moment right now, or this evening as you are lying in bed, consider what is my fatal flaw and how has it in the past or how might it right now, if I let it run rampant, ruin my heroic story. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your, your participation. 
I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the, the time that you spend journeying with me through different thoughts and experiences I have. I have set up a Patreon. I am new to this and would love to have your help and would love to be able to make more of these videos and have them be more polished and more intricately produced. With your help, I will be able to do those things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.